Everything inside me. Collectivism means, the subjugation of the individual to a group, whether to a race class or state does not matter. Collectivism holds that man must be chained to collective action and collective thought, for the sake of what is called, the common good. The French Revolution began in 1789. Maximilien Robespierre was one of its most eager proponents. An extreme left-winger, he sought a totalitarian rule that claimed to be for the people, echoing the recently successful American Revolution, but in reality was, for the rulers. He in turn inspired Karl Marx, author of the Communist Manifesto. Both Robespierre and Marx had been well-born and well-educated, but rather spoiled, and, as young adults, found that they had no particular talent or inclination to pay their own way in life through gainful employment. Consequently, they shared a hatred for those who succeeded economically through their own efforts, and sought a governmental system that would drain such people of their achievements, to be shared amongst those who had achieved less. Interestingly, neither one saw himself as a mere equal to the proletariat that they championed. Each saw himself in the role of the one who was to cut up the spoils, and make the decisions for the rest of society. It's worthy of note that collectivist leaders never see themselves as becoming the humble and patient recipients of whatever bones the government chooses to throw them. They always see themselves in the role of rulers. Collectivism has remained unchanged in its essence to the present day. It attracts those who would take the productivity of others, enrich themselves, and dole out the remainder to the masses. Seen in this light, collectivism would seem abhorrent, who in his right mind would wish to lose his freedom, to end up as a member of the lumpen proletariat. But collectivism has thrived, based on one human emotion, jealousy. Collectivist leaders have learned to sell the people on the enslavement of collectivism, by convincing them, that those they envy, will be brought down, to have their gains taken from them, and distributed by the state to those who are less able or less inspired. Let's have a look at a few quotes from some of the most noted collectivists and see how their ideas are holding up in today's world. The way to crush the bourgeoisie is to grind them between the millstones of taxation and inflation. The best way to destroy the capitalist system is to debauch the currency. Both of these principles are moving rapidly ahead in the EU, US, and other advanced countries. Taxation in both jurisdictions is already high, and leaders' plan increases. Inflation is claimed to be necessary, although they claim the present level to be lower than it really is. In fact, it's unnecessary. It was only a century ago that income tax became institutionalized, robbing people steadily of their wealth without them realizing it, through inflation. The euro, which gobbled up dozens of independent currencies, is in trouble, and the dollar is nearing the end of its ability to function. They will both soon be destroyed, very much as Comrade Lenin would have wished. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Another primary objective is, to dictate what constitutes truth. Governments have always been known for lying to their constituents, but today, it's become a fine art. Today, through television, Governments are capable of spoon-feeding simplistic dogma and repeating it over and over again, in a way that the three leaders above could never have imagined, but George Orwell most certainly did. Give us a child for eight years, and it will be a Bolshevik forever. The secret of freedom lies in educating people, whereas the secret in tyranny is in keeping them ignorant. All collectivist leaders figure out early on that, whilst education can make a country grow and prosper, it also inspires people to think for themselves, and this must not be allowed to proliferate. 
hence the conscious effort to dumb down the proletariat. In the US in particular, scholastic accomplishment has been steadily and purposely declining since 1965. Although many current US history books no longer teach students about the American Founding Fathers, they do teach about gender bias, the need for enforced equalization between citizens, and even the significance of Oprah Winfrey. They are no longer history books, they are now books on contemporary culture. But dumbing down is insufficient. The use of force is often necessary, and that means disarming the populace. The only real power comes out of a long rifle. The most foolish mistake we could possibly make would be to allow the subjugated races to possess arms. We don't let them have ideas. Why would we let them have guns? The first quote is from 1924, but an avowed fan of Stalin, Mao Tse Tung, echoed this principle, saying in his book, entitled, Problems of War and Strategy in 1938, Political power grows out of the barrel of a gun. The quote from Adolf Hitler is from 1942. Certainly, the EU and the US in particular, have been dramatically ramping up their authorities in the weapons department, indicating that they believe doing so will more greatly ensure their power. By going further to disarm their people, as they are also pursuing, they will further ensure that the state becomes all-powerful. Here are a few miscellaneous quotes to ponder. When there is state, there can be no freedom, but when there is freedom, there will be no state. It is enough that the people know there was an election. The people who cast the votes decide nothing. The people who count the votes decide everything. Demoralize the enemy from within by surprise, terror, sabotage, assassination. This is the war of the future. The first quote reminds us that, in the eyes of collectivist leaders, freedom and the state are opposites, regardless of what their rhetoric might say. The second quote reminds us that the belief that democracy exists because voting is allowed, is a false hope. The third quote warns that the terror in our midst is no accident. Nor is it necessarily due to outside forces. If need be, terrorism can always be created through false flag events to justify the removal of the rights of the populace. Political leaders in the former free world regularly state that the removal of inalienable rights, the ever-increasing taxation, and the now perpetual warfare are making the world safe for democracy. However, when the democracy is destroyed by these very acts, they are in fact making the world safe for collectivism. As they themselves state, the bureaucrat has the world as a mere object of his action. Note, today, runaway collectivist policies have pushed the US to the brink of financial ruin. However, when the US economy crumbles, a handful of savvy investors will come out the other side wealthier and better off all around. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This everything inside me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.